I know a lot of you are not gonna wanna hear this. All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I'm Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I wanna talk about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. This is a weekend edition. So we're gonna talk about what happened over the week last week with Bitcoin. We're gonna compare that with what happened to the Bitcoin miners. I'm gonna talk about our three month trend we're in the middle of and what I think is coming next. If everybody could please smash the like button, I would really appreciate it. I'm shooting for 350 likes on this video. You guys have been doing an unbelievable job hitting the like button. We've been hitting our goals and it's made a massive difference for the channel. And I wanna thank everybody for sticking with us for what has been a rough run, both in Bitcoin, in the Bitcoin miners, really in, in YouTube in general. So thanks so much for your support and please smash that like button. I'm also gonna do some chart analysis at the end of this and talk about where I think Bitcoin is going. And I'm gonna talk about one big thing that's gonna happen this week that could completely change that. So that's what we got in store. This is what Bitcoin and Bitcoin miners did week week over week. You're gonna see for the second week in a row, this chart is more green than red. We had a 10 week period where this chart was very, very red. So let's talk about what happened. If you look at the top side of this chart, you're gonna see Mawson was the highest performing stock this week, up 20%. Mawson over this three month period and year to date is by far the worst performing stock out of all the publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies. So while it did have a nice run this week, up 20%, for those of you who hold this, congratulations. This still leaves them fairly solidly in last place, but obviously it's nice to have a green week. So Cypher is up 15%. They're one of the top five by market cap. So that's a big move for them up 15%. Those two were the big winners on the week. I will talk about Riot. Riot was in third place up 6%. Riot is the largest by market cap. So they are worth following and they were among the leaders on the week. Then if we take a look at Bitcoin itself, Bitcoin, which is in gold on this chart, Bitcoin was up 4% this week. That was a very strong week for Bitcoin. Still, the Bitcoin miners tend to be lagging the leveraged play that they should be on Bitcoin. And when we look at the next chart, you're gonna see the Bitcoin miners are way, way behind Bitcoin over the last three months. The other thing worth noting is we have the NASDAQ here in purple. So the NASDAQ was up 2%. The Bitcoin miners seem to be following the NASDAQ more closely than they are following Bitcoin over the last three months. So we'll see if that changes. But the NASDAQ also had a green week up 2%. Particularly, a lot of this action was on Friday. Friday was a green day across the board. A lot of these Bitcoin miners were up more on Friday than they were on the week, which means going into Friday, they were actually in the red. So Friday kind of saved this week. You'll see a bunch of these at or around zero. Hive was up 1%. Digihost, Bitfarms, and DMG were all at zero. Then you're going to see some in the red. The biggest loser this week from a stock performance standpoint was Bitdeer. So Bitdeer is finally pulling back. They were by far the big loser on the week, down 19%. And then we see Iris Energy down 7%. Terrible Wolf we're going to see is one of the other big, big laggers over the last three months. I think they are in second last place out of all the Bitcoin miners over the last 12 weeks. So we're gonna take a look at that in a minute. I also wanna mention Marathon. Marathon was down 5% and that is in stark contrast to Riot, which was up 6%. These are the two largest by market cap and they have been flip-flopping first and second place. Marathon going into this week had a little bit bigger market cap than Riot did. Quickly, I wanna talk about one big thing that's happening this week that could change the trajectory of Bitcoin. Later, I'm gonna go through the Bitcoin chart and I'm gonna tell you what I think is coming over the next several weeks. However, all of that could change. We do have CPI data coming out on Thursday of this week. So anytime there is a surprise, whether it's to the upside or the downside, that really can change the trajectory of the market and Bitcoin is not immune from that effect. So if we take a look, consensus is that CPI is gonna be 3.6%. Last month's number came in at 3.7%. So anything in that neighborhood, and I think probably it won't really have a big impact on the market. So plus or minus, you know, 0.2%, I think will probably be okay. But let's say for instance, this number comes in starting with a four. I think that would have a big impact on the market. And also obviously as a result, it would have a big impact on Bitcoin. The futures have built in about a 73% chance that they will not raise rates in this meeting. If we have a big miss on inflation and it seems like inflation is getting worse than the Fed thought, this would probably be the one thing that would change these numbers. This number actually did get up over 
80% about a week ago. So between 70 and 80% chance that the Fed is not going to raise rates in the November 1st meeting coming up in a few weeks. But this is the last most significant data point that could potentially change at least the market's perception of what the Fed is going to do. So I do think that is noteworthy. As we look at the charts later, just bear in mind, this could be a whammy on whatever is going to happen to Bitcoin. Okay, with that said, let's take a look at the last 12 weeks. We've been tracking this every single week. We are now 12 weeks into a very, very difficult period for the Bitcoin miners. I want to point out, you see Bitcoin in gold at the top here. In this 12 weeks, Bitcoin's down only 7%. But Marathon, you'll see, they are now the second biggest by market cap. They're down 55% in 12 weeks. That is a dramatic move to the downside. Conversely, you're going to see Riot right in the middle. Riot is the largest by market cap. They're down 48%. That's a brutal move to the downside. This is one of the reasons that I think you're going to see, I believe there's a lot of room left to the upside. Having said that, the Bitcoin miners have been extremely stubborn now for almost three full months, so we don't know how long this is going to continue. Okay, on the flip side of that, I like to show the year to date. Unlike all the other charts that we've been looking at for the last 12 weeks, the year to date is still very green for the Bitcoin miners. There are only four Bitcoin miners that are in the red year to date. Two of them are barely in the red. Argo blockchain's down 6% year to date. Stronghold's down 6% year to date. Any is down 35% year to date. That is a pretty significant difference versus you're going to see Bitcoin in gold as always. Bitcoin's up 69% year to date. So despite the fact that it's off of its highs, it's still up 69% year to date. That's a big, big move to the upside. It's still outperforming basically all other assets in the market. You're going to see the NASDAQ has performed very well this year as well. It's up 29% year to date. The other Bitcoin miner that is in red is Mawson down 52%. Gray's up 47%. That's lagging Bitcoin. These are supposed to be leveraged plays on Bitcoin. So for a Bitcoin miner to actually be behind Bitcoin, to me, represents underperformance. DMG blockchain, the same thing, up 56% versus Bitcoin, 69%. Even Terrawolf up 77%, CleanSpark up 84%. I think those are underperforming versus the leverage play that they should be on Bitcoin. This is where I look at these for potential opportunities. If you see a company anywhere from, you know, CleanSpark on down that you think is a very strong company that you think is going to perform very well, operationally over the course of time, then perhaps it's just that their stock is lagging. These things all move at different rates. So this is one of the ways that I look for opportunities. This is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy any of these stocks. You guys need to do your own due diligence. And as you can see, these are all extremely volatile stocks. So please invest carefully as you invest in the Bitcoin miners if you choose to do so. Okay, looking at the rest of this list, from Hive on up, we still have the majority of these Bitcoin miners up over 100% year to date. Remember, 2022 was a crypto winner. So the Bitcoin miners were down drastically. So the even a hundred percent move does still leave a lot of room to the upside. Core Scientific, which is in chapter 11, is way out in front. They're up 820% year to date. However, they've not come out of chapter 11 yet. So I don't know what the ramifications of that are going to be. So I always say, please be careful with this one. Do your own due diligence. And this one is especially volatile. Cypher is up 377% year to date. So that other than Core Scientific, which is in chapter 11, 11, that is by far the leader year to date. Bit Digital is up 270% year to date. So you're going to see there's a few of these that are really outperforming the rest of the group. We have a couple other here, Digihost and Riot, that are up almost 200%. Riot's now 193% versus Marathon's 136%. So you can decide for yourself, does that represent a potential opportunity in Marathon stock or is Marathon headed in the wrong direction? You know, that's for you guys to decide. Lastly, quickly, I want to take a look at market cap. This, this chart has not changed very much. Riot's been in first place from a market cap standpoint for the vast majority of the year this year. Marathon has had a few weeks here and there where it has popped into first place. Last week was one of those weeks, but you can see they did move in dramatically different directions over the last week. So from those two, there's a gigantic drop-off. BitDeer is now down to $871 million. BitDeer's had a gigantic pullback. I want to mention, as I do on every weekly update when I talk about BitDeer, this trades on very, very low volume. Marathon and Riot trade oftentimes at 100 times the volume that BitDeer does. 
and this has had some very strange price action on it, so please be careful if you're trading BitDeer. Cypher actually moved up from fifth place to fourth place, and it's now almost $100 million ahead of CleanSpark. These two have been neck and neck, but they did go again in different directions this week, so Cypher's in fourth place, CleanSpark in fifth place, Hut sits in sixth place where it's been at $450 million, and then you'll see a pretty decent drop off down to under $300 million, $299 million for Bit Farms. There's a group of these, Bit Farms, Wolf, Hive, Core Scientific, and Iris Energy that are, you know, in the same neighborhood. Okay, the last thing I want to do is take a look at the Bitcoin chart. I know a lot of you are not going to want to hear this. From taking polls on our Friday live stream and our Tuesday members only live stream, the majority of retail investors are not bullish right now on Bitcoin. A lot of people are very neutral. It seems like the biggest expectation out there is Bitcoin is going to continue to go sideways. But as I look at the chart, I do think in the short term here, and I'm speaking specifically of the month of October, I do think there's going to be a nice run up in Bitcoin. I will mention, like I said earlier, the one thing that could change the trajectory of this is if inflation comes in this Thursday at a terrible number, then that could very well change the direction of of what I'm about to talk about. But if we go from the bottom of the candlewick on September 11th through today, October 7th, that's just less than a month and you're gonna see Bitcoin is up 12%. Now, the other way to look at it is Bitcoin is retesting these local highs Bitcoin did on August 29th hit 28,181. That's on a candle wick. However, I will say Bitcoin has not closed a daily candle above 28,000 since August 17th. So that's coming up on two months now, just a little bit less than two months. I've been looking for three things to happen. The first one is to break out of this descending line of resistance. This is this white line that goes all the way back to July 13th. We did break out of this somewhere around September 28th. We've been above it ever since. That was one of the three things I wanted to see. The next thing I think we need to do is close a daily candle above 28,000. And then I'd like to see Bitcoin close a daily candle above this red line right here at 28,800. I think these things are going to happen. I have an October price target of somewhere between 30 and $32,000. Again, there's still a lot of room to the upside, almost $4,000 of room left to the upside to still be within our trading range before we start setting a higher high. If you look at the Bitcoin daily RSI, it got significantly into over oversold territory. So that was a very strong reset. Since then, you can see there's a yellow line here. This is an ascending line of support. It's bounced off this. This line of support has held on the daily RSI and we continue this trend up. We are not overbought yet at this point. We're sitting somewhere around 61 right now and this could easily get between 70 and 75. Sometimes the daily RSI can get even higher than that when Bitcoin really gets on a run, but you know, anywhere from 70 to 75 is pretty normal activity. So I think there's a lot of room left to the upside. I think there's a reasonable chance that unless the CPI number derails this, I think we could have a very nice October. I talked about this just prior to the beginning of October. I think all the signals were already pointing that way. I know this is contrary to what a lot of you are feeling. So drop your thoughts in the comments. If you have a difference of opinion, let everybody know what you're thinking. But this is what I'm looking at for Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. So that's what I have for you for this week. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, please remember to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. You can hit the the notification bell so you never miss a video. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.